Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I am your host, Ashley Point, and with me today I have a very special guest from the Honor Guard and the VFW. With me today I have Chuck Haskins and Bob Watros. Thank you so much for coming in and thank you for what you do. Thank you so much for having us here today, Ashley. We appreciate this. It's always an honor to have you here. Yes. And today we have a new face, but not a new mention. <laughs> Bob Watros. Uh, Bob joined me today to, he's my expert on the Orient Veterans Memorial. Bob's the manager over there. And the feature we were gonna talk about is an upcoming event we have uh, that's gonna be happening here on August 11th. And we call it Coffee with a Vet. And it's gonna be from nine o'clock to 3 p.m. And it's gonna be at the or uh, Orient Veteran Memorial over in uh, Lake Orient on 24. During this event, we're going to have free coffee and we're gonna have our veterans there to sit down each and every one of them and sit down and hear their stories and they'll talk to them and share what they know. And we have veterans from uh, uh, World War II, Korea, uh, Vietnam, and also you know, Operation Freedom, uh, the last with Afghanistan and Iraq and those type of wars. Then in the afternoon, we're also gonna have free hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, from noon to about 2 p.m. Uh, during this whole time, uh, we have a very special speaker coming. Uh, he, used, he used to be the commander of the state of Michigan, Jerry Gorski, for the VFW. Then after his speech, we're going to have some ladies that uh, tell us all about the Rosie the Riveters coming over from Ypsilanti, uh, which is called the uh, Victory um, Center or something over there in Ypsilanti they have with the old airport that's over there. Okay. And uh, Rosie the Riveters helped support all of those. And it's one interesting thing, my mother during World War II was one of the Rosie the Riveters that worked out in the Ypsilanti. Did she uh, have the whole, we can do it sign? Oh yeah, she, 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 <laughs> she, she, she was quite, yeah. She was, <laughs> she was riveting the, uh, for bees, I think 17s or 24s on the wings, putting the rivets in the wings. That's all her job was, was putting the rivets in the wings. So uh, the one piece suit and the bandana, yeah. <laughs> all nine yards. <laughs> but uh, after lunch, we're going to around and have what we call a flag ceremony, where we're going to retire the flags that have been dropped off at the memorial or dropped off with our local veterans. And uh, at the Orient Memorial, in the, right off the driveway, we have a mailbox set up, so people can just walk up and drop them off, or they can turn around and if somebody's there, drop them off of that. But I think we've, in this past year, since we've done this last August, we've gotten, what, about 200 flags? I'd say it? close to 200. 200 flags yeah. have been dropped off that we're going to do this flag retirement ceremony. And um, we're, um, the ceremony's made up of a uh, half dozen of our VFW members where we have a, uh, an inspection of the flags to make sure that they, are, that they need to be uh, retired. Then uh, once the inspection happens, we turn around and have a couple of gentlemen take them and they throw them onto a, an open burn pit where you actually burn the flags right then and there. Which is the proper way to dispose of a flag. Proper way of doing it. But also I think we, all the flags right now are folded proper. We unfold them and yes. inspect them. And then we salute the flag as we put it into the fire. Right. And we, uh, it's kind of a neat thing that we do. We do yeah. the, the proper yeah, and it's an uh, honorable way to dispose of a flag. So it, uh, they'll take 200 flags. It'll take us uh, a little bit of time to do that. So, yeah. uh, so you just put them one at a, in one at a time? Uh, it's usually two. And um, the reason we don't put a lot in at a time because the fire gets too hot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, last year, it was a very warm day as it was, and I was burning the hair off my legs. <laughs> so it got uh, quite warm while we were doing that. But in the community, anytime they have a flag on a flagpole that gets torn or ripped or whatever, and they want to know how to get rid of it, just bring it over to the memorial, drop it off the mailbox, or go to our uh, McDonald's down in Lake Orion. And any morning uh, between 8 and 10.30, we have a half dozen of our members there. Just give it to one of those members, and they'll get it over to the memorial for disposal. So, but the public is more than welcome to come out and join us for these either of these vets, Coffee with a Vet, and or the flag ceremony, because um, uh, um, I think last year we had about 20 people showed up for the flag ceremony. Yeah. To come out there uh -huh. and do that. And, but the, um, one, of the, one of the many things that we do at our Veterans Memorial, 
uh, on Memorial Day, we had a service there, and we had a pretty well uh, full crowd there. Yeah, it was amazing considering how hot it was yeah, that oh, day. Oh, really hot. Yeah, extremely hot. All those runners, warm. I was surprised. Oh. More people didn't faint. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, there was an issue we had the prior year of people fainting. And one of the things we're going to do maybe with the run next year is have the run earlier in the morning. Yeah. So they're not have to run later in the thing. So hopefully they don't get the heat build up they're getting. And, uh, but it was a great day. Uh, everybody had a great time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the community really, really supported it. And, uh, you know, one of the things we, we really should mention to the public is the reason we do all these things and how we can do all these things is our poppies that we have our event during the month of May, which we were here, here back in May talking mm -hmm. about what we're going to do for poppies. We had a very, very successful year with our community. And uh, we were at the Kroger's, Ace Hardware's, the on the street corners. Uh, but any place we could be, we were there. And uh, we did it for two weekends. And uh, we met our goals, and uh, which will give us the funding now for all these programs that oh, we, wonderful. we go out and do. That's great. And um, <laughs> the uh, other things we got coming on right now, uh, when one of the media things coming up is a Saturday down in Oxford is the Lone Ranger Parade. And one of the things the VFW and the American Legion do, they lead the parade and uh, walk with our flags. And also we'll have tables set up down on Burdick Street where we'll be having different uh, pins and uh, bracelets and things that we have looking for donations from that also help support our programs that we work with. On Sunday, uh, August 5th, the Gold Star Mothers will be having a ceremony down at Whitechapel Cemetery in uh, Troy. And Gold Star Mothers are the mothers of fallen soldiers or sailors. They have gone on and um, started during World War II and has continued on to today. And uh, the first Sunday each year, we have the ceremony down at Whitechapel. They have a very, very you know, beautiful World War II memorial put down there. And um, during World War II, they had uh, about 30 bodies brought back to Michigan that were unclaimed at that time, and they buried them at Whitechapel. Later they went back and found out who, what families it belonged to and they got headstones for them now. But uh, we have a ceremony there. And while our group, half our group is doing that, our other half of the group is going out to Eaton Rapids, Michigan for what we have as a National Home for Children and they call it Michigan Days. And all the posts in the state of Michigan go down to uh, the Michigan, uh, on Michigan Days at the National Home for Children. and. Um, to have tours set up to see the place, what it's all about, and also see how much money we can raise for the kids for this next year to keep them running. Because mm -hmm. all the expenses in the national home is is funded by the VFW. Yeah, like the clothes and... The clothes, like the um, furniture in the house, the appliances in the house. And uh, uh, when a person comes in there, they usually come in uh, a couple different ways they can come in. Um, they, they lost their spouse during a war conflict. So the, uh, the spouse and their children uh, come to live at the home and get back on their feet. And they give them the training and give them the, uh, the facilities to take care of them while they're, they're getting themselves back together. Four years, right? On okay. average, it's about four years that they spend in there, uh, especially the ones that come in. They're veterans and they just fell in hard times. Mm -hmm and they lost their house and are being put on the street, and, but they have children. So we get them into the national home and give them a place to live, get them, act, get them the training they need. Um, the kids get educated, the adults get educated, and so after the time at the home, all this stuff that they receive there, the appliances and the homes and that, that goes with them to give them their new startup whenever they go out in the public and be it in Michigan or any other state because we have in the National Home for Children, we have I think 48 homes set up and uh, representing every state in the United States. And all the VFWs across the United States help support this. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing place to see. And since you refurbish almost every time, it, you definitely need donations. F donations to keep this going every year. and. Uh, one of the things our post did this year, we took five of the kids and sponsored them to another one of our gyms is camp, called Camp Trotter, which is over in Nuego, Michigan. And uh, we sponsored those kids to go to summer camp. So they have the opportunity, because when they live at the National Home, they get 
bare minimum of everything. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not a luxury life they're living, but they're getting the experiences and the education they need to get back on their feet and so they can live back in society and be successful. But that's, that's, that's this Sunday, uh, uh, August 5th at the National Home for Children. We have the Coffee with the Vet on the 11th. Then uh, on the 25th of Michigan, uh, 25th of August, we're going over to uh, Camp Trotter. It's the last weekend of the year for the camp, and we go out and we have a lunch, and we help clean the place up and get it ready for winter time. And uh, they do have some fall uh, people come and rent the camp over, but uh, it's a um, for kids from eight to 13 years old. It's a fantastic place to. Have a couple of weeks in the summertime and go out and enjoy yourself. And it's a beautiful lake. So, I've I've been totally impressed with what the, what they do with the kids out there. And this I think was this year we got a couple from our post kids are actually going to camp out there. Actually, actually they go out there for one week and come on back. So now this is actually a community, isn't it? I mean the houses are all together. They're not scattered throughout a town. That that is the yeah for National yeah. Home for Children. Yeah. Yeah. That is it's a it's a, it's a totally self-enclosed community mm -hmm. of the 48 plus homes um, with streets. Uh, they used to have their own schools, but now the, uh, they're going to the local schools of Eaton Rapids. Um, but everything they need is in there. Everything is surrounding them is cornfields. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's out in the country of Eaton Rapids if people have been out there. Which That's I think is a good thing. Beautiful. Just good. Get some good away. Be away. Yep. Yeah. Get some away. Get some away gets them away from the big cities and gets them down into the country type of atmosphere and enjoy it. Less stressful. And one yeah. of the things, each one of the kids, because they got a working farm there, each one of the kids, and there's about 100 kids in the, uh, in the home right now, they have to belong to like a 4-H program where they have to take care of an animal on the farm. So mm -hmm. it could be a goat, it could be a cow, it could be you know, a cat, and it's, on the, <laughs> it's over there, but they are responsible and they work the farm and it's part of earning their credits for what they do. So it's educational for them also to see what it's like to live on an actual working farm. Teaches them responsibility. Yes, yes, so. Which um, is definitely a good thing. <laughs> but they've, it's, the National Homes have been so successful. They've had kids that have gone through it and gone all the way through college, gone out and had started their own life, do well in life, come back and build more houses out at the National Home for other families that come out there. And, I'm uh, sure that encourages them. Oh, absolutely. Because not only the, the VFW has the houses we support out there, but uh, also joining us, they have a, um, oh shoot, I'm trying to think of the, uh, motorcycle, there's a motorcycle uh, organization that uh, helps support, it was Harley, that's a Harley organization. Patriot Guard? Uh, not no. Patriot Guard, no, that's uh, Harley something. That's out there, and they, they help sponsor a house. And uh, then we got these ones of prior uh, students out there to support the homes and go out there. But uh, if anybody ever gets a chance to go out and eat in Rapids, and this, they have tours of this place all the time, it's a great place to be. Great place to be for families that their families that are in need, and that we help out. And do you always all buy always buy brand new items, or can people donate old furniture or slightly used? We two. we take slightly used items out there. Um, we don't. They're not a resale place, so everything they use, they don't have a lot of storage out there. So th this Sunday when we go, we're going to have a few vehicles going out, loaded up with uh, usually it's pretty new clothes. Uh, if it's not new, it's new, pretty new. Newish. And, <laughs> yeah. So T-shirts, underwear, uh, bathrobes, things like this have been donated to us. Uh, we got. Uh, in fact, tomorrow I got a couple hours of spending over counting how much stuff we do have going into the different boxes. But um, the um, we we you know, we provide everything. So, but, uh, but we couldn't do any of this if it wasn't for the people who support us with the poppies in November. And uh, so we, we're very very appreciative of what for it, uh, we did and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, not only a National Home for Children do we support, we've got the local high schools, Oxford and Lake Orient. We support the senior all-night programs they have there. Young Marines. We have the Young Marine programs that we, uh, it's kids from the local area here that um, need some type of additional training. Uh, we're not training to be servicemen, but we're giving the training and discipline 
that we learn the services, and that's what the, our young Marines do. And uh, oh, what other things we we got? We we spend a lot of well, you lot support of funds the Orient Veterans just, Memorial. Too. We as we spent the <laughs> Orient Veterans yeah, Memorial. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but then another thing we do is anytime we have a veterans in a need, we spend money on helping the veterans get back on their feet. And uh, if they got a flat tire in the car, it keeps them from getting preventing them to go to work. That uh, will help them out, get them a tire in their car. Or if they're losing their you know, utilities for some reason, we'll work with different programs and make sure that uh, we can get them back and uh, going good. And uh, one of the, like this past week, one of the main features what we do at the VFW is we're veterans working to help other veterans. And we have veterans that don't know what the availability of benefits from the Veterans Administration is. Uh, we help explain to them what they are. We'll actually, like this past week, I took a veteran down to the Oakland County Veterans Office to help him start a claim on one of his injuries he had for his, as a veteran. But uh, we have a uh, service officer within our post that is educated on uh, veterans' benefits and will turn around and assist those, uh, educate the veteran and also get them, make sure they get their proper work. And we've we have certain veterans that seem like every week they're taking veterans uh, to either the Saginaw or the Detroit uh, hospitals uh, for treatment for whatever the issues they may be having. So that's the main reason for the, our, the VFW is to support veterans, support our community, and um, we try to do the best we can with the money allocated that we get. And speaking of money, I hear you had a fundraiser last weekend that oh. turned out very well. Yes, we have to thank the community for at Culver's. Last Saturday, we had our annu second annual car show. And uh, the car show, uh, we had 200 cars or so show up. Uh, we were out there from 9 o'clock to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Beautiful day, beautiful day. We had prizes every hour for the people that were brought the cars in, and everybody had a good time. And uh, we thank Culver's for donating their uh, a site for us. But uh, this is our second annual, and after the results of this one, we decided we're going to do another one next year. <laughs> but the uh, mm -hmm. one thing we heard a conflict, though, we had a couple other auto shows going on at the same time, so our guys were complaining try to, to do that. So next year we may move it to a weeknight so more fit to the weekends because it seems so many car groups are yeah. doing, doing things around the Summer around the always the time. Yeah. So we may be moving a Saturday and going to a Tuesday night instead of a uh, Saturday in the next year. But we will be doing it again. And uh, we raised, uh, it was about $700. Is that what yeah, it was? About $700 in donations that was given there that we'll turn around and use during our programs for helping people. So... Um, we have another one coming up in September, late September, at uh, GMC Gowling, GMC Buick Gowling. Uh, they'll, on, their, on their site, they'll have a uh, car show for the local people. In fact, they, they got one coming up this weekend downtown. The cruise in? Uh, no, this is not the cruise. The cruise is the 18th and 19th of August. Uh, this weekend, they have one downtown Lake Orion they call it the drive-through cruise. Is that by the police department? I think they, it they're is. with the police yeah. department in Galling. Yeah. They oh. they do it downtown Orion. But Galling does they, a lot. Yeah, they yeah. do it long as Galling does it quite yeah. a bit for our, our veterans yeah. in this area, and uh, we appreciate everything they do for us. Yeah. But uh, they're also doing all the things they can for the car guys too. And uh, but if anybody's driving this weekend, it's because downtown Orion was shut down with all the cars. <laughs> 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 they're going to have down there, and uh, they have a pretty good turnout, I believe. Yeah, I uh, think so too. Yeah. yeah, me and I got so much going on this weekend. I won't be down there for that car <laughs> show, nor nor I have been doing it in the past because I'm usually walking in the parades now in Oxford that day. So that's going to be it. And um, but that's pretty well everything we've got for yeah. August, I believe. I think that um, covers it. Yeah. yeah. But what we can talk a little bit about is our Orient Veteran Memorial. Um, yes. The last time we were there, we talked about the uh, dedication of our new dog memorial. Uh, that's been a really, really successful uh, for the community. Uh, we have people coming up all the time, bringing their dogs <laughs> to <laughs> see the shepherds that we have uh, lined up there. And I remember this year that they had the d 
actual dog salute. It took a little bit oh, to get the dog to yes. actually. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So it yeah. was, it was, it's quite moving. Yeah. To uh, listen to those dogs. But I've, I've seen four or five dogs all at one time do that dog salute. That'll bring tears to your eyes yeah. when that happens. Yeah. You know, it's quite a sight. Yeah. But um, besides our dog memorial, uh, two years ago we started a victory garden. No, I think this is about our fourth year fourth for that year, too. Fourth year, yeah. fourth year for the victory yeah. garden. Time flies. <laughs> yeah. But uh, our victory garden was uh, our major benefactor to us at the Orient Memorial is Home Depot. Yeah. They have done a lot of work down here and uh, assist us on all different programs. And through the hard work of their employees, they built us a uh, victory garden. It's a raised bed uh, garden, about 12 feet long, eight feet yeah, long. Well, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty long. It's, it's pretty 12, long. It's pretty long. Yeah. And in, it's two, two, two beds uh, there, and we've got just like they used to do back in World War II, which we've got the name Victory Garden, because you had during World War World War II, you didn't buy your food at the uh, grocery stores because they didn't have anything. Everything you had to grow it yourself. Uh, you had to grow everything yourself. So. Uh, Tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, uh, what else cucumbers. You cucumbers, all there, all planted by Home Depot, and they're there for the community. Stop mm -hmm. by, and if you need a tomato for dinner, stop by and see if there's any there. There yeah. will be starting next week. There will be lots of <laughs> lots of. Uh, anyway, we there's, <laughs> we have plenty of tomatoes, <laughs> <laughs> plenty of tomatoes, yeah, and good. cucumbers, and eggplants, and uh, but we have people call the time, and um, it's located behind one of our memorials, we call it the Peacoat Memorial, but the, the garden is right on the what's the uh, north end of the garden? North side. Uh, north yeah, side. North of wall, it. we call it, yeah. So, um, but the... Uh, but back there also, there's a, some plaques that explain what a Victory Garden is, you know, how they got started and who did it. Uh, but everybody had a Victory Garden back in World War II. Well, for one thing, we didn't have the grocery stores. Like you didn't have grocery stores. No, we didn't have that. Everything else. No, we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, we did not. And right beside the uh, Victory Garden is a big box that stands up about four feet tall. And that's a time capsule that was put in, I think, I believe, last year. Two years. Two years. Two, again, yeah. 40, time flies. 48, <laughs> 48 more years they can open it. In 48 more years. <laughs> But they had s items from Orion and Orion Township that um, they wanted to put in the time capsule. So it's about four feet tall of items that was in there. And, and so our people of the future can see what we were all about yeah. if you're the day. So is there anything else about our memorial? Well, I think, you know, part of our duties and responsibilities now that we volunteer and do up there, we need to keep our young people informed. And this is part of why the Coffee with the Veterans coming up. And young people, I'm saying 50 and younger, they really don't know what veterans went through. Uh, we're too far removed from World War II, Korea, Vietnam. You, these guys now are 70 years old, the Vietnam veterans, 70 My and dad's more. a Vietnam yeah. vet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So he's probably about 70. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah. And our young people really don't know that, and I don't think our football players do either. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my my dad was a Vietnam my dad was a Vietnam vet. My grandpa, World War Two. Mm. So yeah, got a lot of veterans in the family. Yeah. Oh yeah, all yeah. my great uncles, but no one in my generation. Right. Mm. Not that we didn't try. Mom got in the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it's important that we let the you know the younger people yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, which we, with the Orion schools, they bring down classes yeah. that uh, Bob gives tours of the, uh, the, of the center and walks around to each one of the different you monuments know. we have. And that's something the else why we that we them. could tell too is we welcome that kind of thing. If yeah. a group wants to come, we'll get veterans there to walk them through that and explain a lot of that. A lot of people don't know Victory Garden, you know, and, yeah. uh, war bonds, uh, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but we need to let them know. Yeah. And it's so hard not to, cause there's so much to fact versus fiction now. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's getting a wider gap as time goes by. That, yeah. the history that we l teach the kids in schools that, yeah. um, you know, World War II is about two paragraphs long now. Mm -hmm. 
to tell you about everything that happened in World War II and Korea. Most history books don't even have the Korean War in it. And, we're, uh, I think we're kind of lucky that we've got four or five World War II veterans yep. that are able to talk to young people, and they're happy to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, they really, they like to tell their story, and I think it's kind of neat. And they're amazing stories. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. They're amazing. And they're real, you know. And well. people that just cannot believe the way things were back then and how far we've come today. Yeah. And if they don't watch out, you know, history always repeats itself that uh, things could happen right again if we don't watch it. If you don't learn from history, you are doomed to repeat it. That is absolutely correct. Well, absolutely we've got correct. a plaque up there in the, in the uh, memorial area uh, that says, a nation that forgets its past has no future. Yeah. And uh, maybe we're forgetting our past a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's part of our job is to keep that out there. You know? And it's my generation's job to keep it going. That's right. And that's getting harder. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. with modern day media, you can't separate pretty much Truth from fiction, thing. yep. And there's, I think for every piece of truth you got there, it's two pieces of fiction. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to pick out what is true. Yep. Even so. if they say it's fact, there might be just a tiny bit of fiction in there that completely covers it all. Yep. Yeah. So that's why we're here today, <laughs> yeah. to let the community know <laughs> that uh, on August 11th, we're gonna have coffee with the vet and come down and get a free cup of coffee, have a donut, or come down and get a hot dog or hamburger in the afternoon, but uh, yeah. come on and say hello. And, yeah. uh, we more than welcome you to come on down here. Yep. Thank you oh, thank for you, coming in today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, yeah, we really important. appreciate me having yeah. the opportunity to come yeah. out here and talk with you. It is our honor to talk to you. Oh. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.